March on, brave Dowie! March on! Greetings, young one. So you wish to reunite the realms? Well, it shall be a great task, worthy of the ancestors themselves. Our great people have long been reduced to but a few scattered holes. But with the right leadership, we can once again rise to the greatness of centuries past. That is my oath as your High King, and we shall see it done. Our great dwarf armies are heavily armed and armored, steady soldiers capable of fighting foes many times their numbers. But our ability to replenish losses is weak, so take care or you will find yourself being worn down from the many battles to come. Use our ranged power against the enemy while our sturdy warriors hold the line. Our units are not fast to recruit, so ensure you do not lose them in battle. In terms of our holdings, we start diminished, and our ability to grow them is limited. We can improve it through commandments, and as High King, I shall make sure they are greater. Make sure to commit to the research to improve our growth and our commandments, and our empire will prosper. The Greenskins surround us. To the east, the vile beasts have taken hold of much of our land, and their leader should be destroyed with extreme prejudice. For there are many grudges to be settled yeah. and great rewards for it. We should be mindful of the French vile rats Craven that lurk Taylor. beyond the mountains, for they will be a nuisance that must be dealt with one way or another. But the greatest of our foes lie to the south. Their savage leader will muster a great many hordes to strike at our allies. We may aid those allies or take shelter behind the walls of our capital to lure the beast into a trap. More vile rats lie south as well, though our allies will ensure they do not pose much of a problem, though their territory would be valuable. March east, secure the gold there, and then sweep down south, building up great armies of ranged power to defeat the rat vermin and the greenskins. Secure my great weapons and armor through the quests that will be given, for you shall reap great rewards for doing so. Once our initial area is secure, there are opportunities to the north or south, and an ally that we might recruit to the far west. This king may be a great boon for our empire should he join us. You may also find it convenient to install certain modifications that will allow us access to some of our distant kin, for they are too far and prone to death, but their power would be an incredible aid to our people. So let it be done. Let us march out and smite our foes and erase the grudges from the book. So welcome everyone, Costine here with my campaign overview guide for Forgrim, Grudge Bearer of the Dwarfs in Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. Hope you liked that little intro that I put together there using AI voices. It didn't quite come out the way I wanted it to, I did try multiple times, but Forgrim's voice apparently is difficult for the AI to get uh, correctly, like I've, I was inspired by a video about Carl Franz hating Saurus and I thought I'd give it a go. Pretty decent, all the same. So, Forgrim Grudgebearer, the dwarfs. The dwarfs are not a great race in Warhammer 3, but you can certainly make it work, as I mentioned, as it was mentioned in the intro. Dwarfs do have powerful units. They have high armor, high leadership, they have great range power, they have artillery available from tier 2. The downside is that they can only recruit so many units per turn, and increasing recruitment capacity is difficult. On top of that, they have very weak casualty replenishment. Only really being able to improve casualty replenishment through the barley field chain, which is still incredibly limited to only 5%. So casualties in battles as the dwarves can be pretty fa painful. There is a way with a mod to get past this, because it's always annoying just waiting for units to replenish. Uh, the way to do so is to get the craftable dwarf replenishment mod that's available on the workshop at the moment. Another thing mod-wise that you may want to get is the Defeat the Legendary Lords mod to be able to get access to Grumbrindle, because otherwise it is a painful experience having to march all the way here uh, to then create a revolt in Malekith's territory so you can potentially recruit Grumbrindle. Because Grumbrindle, pretty much every campaign I've played on Legendary, will end up dying. By either way, that's, that's the dwarves. Of course, you also have the grudges. The grudges, dependent on the legendary lord you're playing, will give you different rewards. For you, dealing with Skarsenic will give you the Master of No Spite. But you need to do it in a specific way, since you need to f win 
five battles against them. Now, you may not have the luxury of actually fighting those fa five battles against Skarsnik. Your best bet might be to actually just reduce Skarsnik to the world edge archway and just sack him multiple times, like wait quite a few turns with uh, Forgrim. The problem is, the issue with that is, like, yeah, you can sweep uh, Forgrim and... Uh, the bloody spears easily aside. The issue that you're going to then encounter, however, is that you've got a pretty major threat in your campaign in Warzak. So what Warzak is going to do in a lot of situations is he's going to take this territory, like pretty much most of this province, turn one in the western badlands, and then he's going to march on Barak Var. And he's going to besiege Barak Var. If you don't help Barak Var, they're going to collapse. You may be incentivized to try and rush an army to help there, or you could just let them die and instead hold up at the gates of Karaz Akarak in the Silver Road. Um, those are your two choices. Um, but your main campaign objective is securing the Silver Road, getting the Dead Rock Gap, dealing with Skarsnik, getting that Master Ruin of uh, Spy, dealing with the World Edge Archway. Now, you do have an annoyance here, and it is just an annoyance, not a threat. And that's annoyance is Tretch Craven Tail. You don't want to march into the Darklands, but if you uh, if you ignore Tretch, he's almost certainly going to declare war on you, and he's going to raid your territory here in the World Edge war Archway. Now, you want this province. You want the gold mine over here. You need the income. But if you ignore uh, Tretch, he is going to be an issue. One option could be to wipe him out, like you bring Forgrim over here, you recruit units along the way, you try and get your barrack, your capital building, your barracks to tier 2 so you can get quarrelers, you can get artillery, and you make recruit a second lord just to bring those units to the front line, uh, to Forgrim, but recruit as many units as possible, you deal with Skarsen quickly, and then you march your full stack of troops to deal with Tretch. Tretch is going to have other issues, but you want to wipe him out. You could also engage in diplomacy to secure some kind of deal, like taking Mount Silver Spear, selling it to Tretch, maybe getting a non-aggression pact. But either way, you want to put in as little effort as possible to deal with Tretch, Craven Tail. There, though there might be a benefit in securing this entire province and then selling it to Emmerich, who could become one of your strongest steadfast allies from the very beginning of the campaign. Now, what's going to happen in balance? I've talked about Warzag. There's going to be other issues. Like, Karakazul is going to besiege Black Crag. They're likely going to take it, or a significant portion of it. But then they're going to be beaten up by, by the two Greenskin factions, the uh, Scabby Eyes and Warzak himself. And then you've got Queek over here coming in from the south. And between Warzak and Queek, you're going to have a hell of a fight. You could play this defensively and just use the incredible power of Dwarven defenses to your advantage to just wipe them out. Uh, but if you do want to get Kazador as a lord, then he uh, can be valuable. Uh, you might need to be aggressive and take this territory. So you do have a difficult early game situation. It does hurt, especially because you don't start with the tier 2 capital. So it's going to take you time to get that artillery, to get those quarrelers. That is something of a nuisance. Now, Forgrim gets significant advantages in his campaign. He gets that 20 diplomacy to dwarves. He starts with the grudge meter, pretty empty in a lot of ways. So he just starts with severity arc. So he gets control, research, diplomacy, and growth because control basically equals growth. So he does have a growth benefit because of that. And he can also improve commandments uh, by quite a bit. So, and you want to use the growth commandment. Like you don't necessarily want uh, to get the barley field for growth, but what you want to do is get commandments, like get the research as well to improve the commandments. So autonomy of the holds is by default, I think, 15 growth. With the commandment is 30. With Forgrim, it's 40. That's a good amount of growth. It doesn't match the greenskins and their insane growth, but it's still a decent amount when you add it with heavy cornstones. When you add it to the barley field, it is pretty decent when you're looking at that and you want to take advantage of that situation. Those are the faction-wide benefits. Uh, when we're looking at Forgrim himself, he does have four quest battles or four quest items, each of which has its own battle. Now, to deal with these battles, maybe get the mod that allows you to auto-resolve them, just so you're not wasting your time. Like, they can be annoying, like, I personally dislike playing quest battles, because I've done them many times already. Um, but doing those, either manually fighting them as you, uh, the only way you can by default, or auto-resolving them, 
if you use a mod, will give you, beyond the items themselves, each quest battle will give you fa of like 7,000, 8,000 gold, temporary casualty replenishment. So you're looking at over 20,000, 30,000 gold from doing all these quests, getting all these items, and temporary casualty replenishment. You don't want to do one quest after another. You want to take advantage of that ca temporary casualty replenishment that you can get there. Now, skill-wise, he does get growth. He does get control in a local province. He gets hero capacity for all the heroes. Like, he increases hero capacity for all the dwarven uh, heroes. Runesmiths, Fanes, and Master Engineers. He also has a tendency. He does start with the Master Engineering. He does have a tendency of getting events to get even more heroes during his campaign. So Forgrim can be pretty powerful, though he does have a lot of early game issues. But if you overcome those issues, uh, I argue his faction is the strongest dwarf faction in the game. Provided, of course, if you can get Grumbrindle, which does require a mod or a very long journey. Even without Grumbrindle, um, even without Grumbrindle, the faction effects are pretty substantial what you do get with uh, Forgrim, though he is certainly one of, uh, certainly the generic legendary lord of the dwarves. He's got the most generic playstyle, but that playstyle is not necessarily uh, bad. I mean, Forek can have substantial trade benefits, of course. Grumbrindle has insane effects through his blue skill line, though if you can get them as a le if you can recruit them in your own faction, you can take advantage of those, because uh, Grumbrindle's benefits are tied to him, they're not tied to his faction. So, if you can uh, get them as a legendary lord, uh, you can benefit from them as the other dwarf legendary lords. And certainly of the legendary lords that start in this area and the Badlands are close enough, including Balagar and Ungram, I'd argue Forgrim is by far and away the strongest of them, though he does have a very harsh campaign start and a lot of enemies uh, to deal with. But it is something that you can make work. And if you do survive Warzag, and funnily enough, surviving Warzag may not necessarily be as much of a problem as you might think. Because here's what Warzag does. Uh, let's say you want to stop him near Barrackfire. You're going to need at least a full stack of troops, maybe two full stacks after you've dealt with Skarsenik. Here's what's going to happen. Warzak will throw everything he has against you. But they are stupid, so they'll just end up killing themselves in the siege battle. And Barak Var is an incredible choke point. This bridge is insane to try and assault. So, so Warzag may throw f uh, full, uh, three entire stacks against you and lose. What then happens is that Malagor, and I've seen this happen multiple times, Malagor will likely attack Warzag because they don't particularly like each other. Or maybe Queek goes in, takes him out. Now, you didn't have to deal with a super powerful Queek, but I'd rather take dealing with Skaven than dealing with the Greenskins with their Wa armies. So Warzak can kill himself on on your borders. There might be an advantage in ignoring Barakvar because then he might turn his attention against Queek, and both of them can weaken each other out. Like that would be the ideal scenario where neither of, neither of them wipes each other out completely, but rather weaken each other so you can swoop in and take all of their territories. That would be the mo that would be the ideal situation. You might have to uh, fra sacrifice Barakvar to achieve that kind of level of success, however. Just worth bearing in mind. But yeah, head east, take these two provinces, then head south, maybe the only clan, clan Vermin and Black Rag, maybe let Casador take it. Maybe you uh, you make a deal or wipe out Dredge Craven that'll be head, uh, before heading south, and then just pick that fight. Whenever it is the most opportune moment, pick that fight with Warzak to wipe them out. Once Warzak is wiped out, uh, you're going to want to turn your attention towards Queek, take all of this territory, these provinces over here, um, engage in diplomacy with Emmerich so you can secure, anchor, so you can anchor your eastern flank, and then you can take the entirety of the Badlands all the way to the Desert of Camry. Once you reach the Desert of Camry, Cetra is very, uh, diplomacy with Cetra and Kalida is a very a viable option, and you can also make deals with Forek, get diplomacy, and eventually get the Confederation with Forek, and Scarbrand is not going to be able to stand up to full stacks of Quarrelers. And once you've secured uh, all of that territory, it might be time to head in north, deal with Vlad, deal with the territory here. Uh, hopefully Ungram doesn't die, but if you deal with Skarsnik, Ungram should be in a pretty good position in his campaign, and he should anchor your northern flank. Northern flank. But once you've secured the south, you move north, 
you get territory, you engage in diplomacy properly with Ungram finally, uh, you get the confederation hopefully going with him, and then you march north taking all of this territory. There's a gold mine here that Azak has, and at this point you might have to deal with Grimgor and his, uh, his uh, territory. Victory campaign conditions. You just need to eliminate, uh, you just need to take 30 settlements and take one of the major grudges, but you'll be doing that naturally because of the territory you want to take. And then uh, long campaign victory, both of which are, by the way, very important for hero capacity as well as uh, hero recruit rank. Long campaign victory condition requires you to ensure you have a very low severity as well as taking 70 settlements, which isn't a difficult task at all. That's all there is to say. Quasine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications, and I'll see you boys and girls next time.